Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome once again to the southern wing of the Stink Bug Works. I haven't spoke with you folks in a while, and I thought I'd just, since I'm having coffee, and I like having coffee with you guys, I thought I'd update you on the status of things. If you remember, some of the parts for this thing went missing in action, and one of them was the exhaust stack I made. Well, I made a new exhaust stack using the same materials and the same techniques. Although, I think this one's slightly different than the last one and slightly preferable in what I had hoped the first one was. This is a stainless steel turkey baster, <laughs> at least part of it. And the other one I used, this one appears to be... Uh, stainless steel sheet that was pressed into shape. The other actually appeared to be cast or die cast, and it was twice the thickness of this. And, you know, for looking good back here, I didn't want that thickness. So even though this doesn't look scale, because scale should be much larger, it conveys the point. Remember, this boat is not scale. This thing's way too low. It's a representation. And as soon as I get some more stickers, I can finish up this, finish up this, and then I will have finished all the tail feathers, and it'll be about time to tape and paint this. Okay, now, so, um, what am I going to do? Here. This you have and haven't seen. I've shown it and was going to donate it, and <laughs> there wasn't a lot of interest in it, so I decided I would do something with this. Now, this was... God, these things are 20 years old. This was um, one of the original eco boats. Eco in that they were supposed to be economical. You're supposed to run these things with a, with a speed 400 motor and cheap stuff. And for the most part, they were economical. And then guys started racing them. And, you know, then they had to have titanium this and carbon fiber that. And pretty soon they weren't cheap anymore. My plan for this guy is to have something I can just take along with me in my truck. And to that end... I've got those little tiny uh, um, uh, lipo chargers that you plug into your cigarette lighter. That's what I'm going to use to power this or charge this thing. And I'll just keep it in my truck. I've ordered one of those little cheap two-part transmitters, those little toy transmitters where they come apart. So I can keep all of this just in a small thing in my truck. I'm going to power it with this. This is the Mystery 3000. This is the motor that we used for uh, Santee Spec Racing. <laughs> this was a great little motor in those little 15-inch uh, MHZ shovel nose hydroplanes. <laughs> This would literally blow them off the water. They they were really good. And the Gecko, the Gecko ran really good on this because it's a lightweight motor and it's about the performance of a Speed 400. You know, it's 3,000 RPM per volt. So that's my plan for this. Just something quick and cheap. You know, it'll use a straight drive shaft with, uh, you know, a flange motor mount. Boom. Away you go. Quick and easy rudder servo, boom, boom, away you go. <coughs> Whopping 20 amp speed control. This huge 24 millimeter propeller. That ought to put it right in the ballpark and give me something that I can just go throw in a pond anywhere. Before they invented flood chambers, this is how they got boats to self right. They were kind of flat here and big and bulbous there. And it didn't like floating this way. It would just... And with that outrunner motor, the torque of that thing will help flip these over. It worked in the geckos. So that's kind of my status. This I'm just waiting for 
what am I waiting for? I'm waiting for, uh, oh, rudder parts on this thing. And so those are my side things while this dries. Like I said, pretty soon I've got to uh, mask this off. I've got a little red tinge on here. I've got to take off. I have a secret way of doing that. Maybe I'll share it with you. So until then, boys and girls, jet out. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I bring you an added bonus to today's video. Some of you might have been wondering, how did he do it? How did he mount that turkey baster? Well, here's the deal. I ground a flat on the turkey baster and using epoxy mixed with milled fiberglass, I made a paste and I glued this onto here. And, you know, I double checked the angles, you know, before I glued anything, but I glued this onto there. Then I slid it in there and marked the holes for the hold down screws. And then came in and glued in some nuts using the same fiberglass and epoxy mix, being careful not to get uh, um, epoxy on the threads. And then, after all that cooked off, I uh, came over with just one layer of three-quarter ounce glass cloth on top of everything, just to tie it together and stick it. So this thing just, <clears throat> this thing just bolts in with two bolts now. And so uh, I can still get in there and paint what needs to be painted. But that's the deal on the turkey baster. So, uh, oh yeah, th then you got to heat it up with a torch to get these cool colors. But, you know, it's really easy to watch the colors go with the torch. So there you go. Today's added bonus feature. Until next time, boys and girls, jet out.